this episode of Finno Ugric Machining, we are going to talk about my Saturday activities. Uh, my Flea Market Catch, uh, and uh, then we are going to talk about uh, the packet I received last week, um, <clears throat> and furthermore, some chat about taps. Uh, well, let's go on with it. Jahrhunderthalle is a big ass bubble in Frankfurt Hearst. Uh, every other Saturday, a big ass flea market takes place in the nearby parking lot and park. Taking care of my fluid balance with some beer. Uh, because be uh, alcohol and uh, bicycle is a very hazardous combination, this is non-alcoholic. And uh, this is a bretzel. Just sitting, sipping my beer and eating the pretzel, watching as the ships pass by. Hmm. Last week we had uh, some heavy rain, uh, therefore the rivers are mm, a little bit angry. Last but not least, defeating the hunger. So let's talk about the taps. Uh, well, taps can be roughly divided into three categories. The tapered tap, the plug tap, and the bottoming tap. The difference between these three is the amount of taper on the cutting edge of the tap. The taper tap has the longest, uh, the plug tap has somewhere in between, and the, block, the bottoming tap has the shortest. Uh, bottoming tap uh, <coughs> uh, has only about one to two turns of taper. Uh, this uh, plug tap has a little bit more, maybe five. And there is no limit how much taper you have in the tapered tap. The tapered tap uh, is usually the best one if you are making uh, holes free, uh, threads freehand. Uh, well, the reason for this is that it guides, uh, it adjust, adjusts itself while you are doing the thread. Well, uh, you still have to keep it somewhat straight, but uh, it's quite forgiving. The block tap, uh, well, you better first uh, start, if you are doing uh, threads manually, <coughs> freehand, you better start with, uh, with uh, your, uh, your taper tap. And if you cannot finish the hole, blind hole for example, or there is some obstacle behind your hole, 
uh, then uh, do the rest of the job with your plug tap. Uh, well, and if this isn't enough, blind hole again, uh, then at the last thing you can do is to do it by the bottoming tap. This way you achieve, um, well, maybe, uh, maybe, a uh, straight thread. Uh, well, the best option anyway <coughs> is to use some sort of guidance, um, a spring-loaded center, or put it on your drill press, press drill, and then uh, use that one. Uh, or uh, you can do it in a lathe. Uh, start in a lathe, if, and if you cannot do it uh, the, all the way, uh, then you you just uh, take the piece off and then uh, continue manually. Well, <coughs> and then uh, all these tabs can be divided into further into three categories. So we are getting three times three. <laughs> nine different types of uh, taps uh, and this has to do how the tap is uh, ev evacuating uh, the cuttings uh, the most common type uh, is uh, the one that is not evacu evacuating the cuttings they are staying in the culls and they are staying there so, if you are doing a long, long thread, you need to take the tap out of the hole once in a while and clean it and then uh, put it back there because uh, the cuttings might, might block and jump your tap and uh, then <coughs> you have a breaking, broken tap in the hole, which is of course nothing uh, that you want to have. Um, then uh, we have a so-called gun tap. Well, um, this is because um, the name gun uh, is because uh, this kind of a tap uh, is uh, evacuating the chips in the direction of travel. So when you tap a hole, the cuttings are pushed into the hole. This, of course, is a very bad thing if the hole uh, isn't open, blind hole, so then uh, the cuttings will be pressed uh, and uh, certainly give you some trouble in the hole. Um, <coughs> uh, the third type is uh, a spiral flute, and this is my favorite tap, actually. Um, it is. Um, type of tap which is evacuating the chips out of the hole. So when you make a thread, uh, there will be coming uh, the cuttings out of the hole towards you. If you are drilling inside the hole, so the cuttings are going uh, the other direction. Uh, so this means that uh, if you have a blind hole, the cuttings will not accumulate inside your hole. <clears throat> um, then about the strength of these taps. Uh, well, the strongest of them all if, is of course the straight tap. The one that uh, doesn't actually evacuate its chips. Well, it has to do with the geometry, etc. Um, the next one is, uh, the, is the gun tap. Usually a gun tap uh, is designed in a way that it has uh, the, <coughs> the cutting part, um, which is a little bit um, slanted, it's uh, on the very uh, tip of the tool. And after that it's a normal straight tap. The spiral flute, however, it has the spiral, spiral all over the place, so it's a spiral from the start to the end. And this one <coughs> makes it somewhat weak. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually the only tap I have succeeded in breaking in the hole. And uh, this one, uh, if they are not sharp, 
they really you can really really break them easily <coughs> so uh, but that all being said the spiral flute tap is yet despite all these uh, these things it's still my favorite because um, the um, <coughs> Evacuation of ships. If you are if you are dealing with, uh, for example, aluminium or aluminum, then uh, <coughs> this uh, type of tap is really nice. Uh, I'm doing a lot of uh, small holes. Uh, for example, in electronics, I uh, fabricate my own heat sinks from six millimeter aluminium, and then on the edge. I just bore the holes and then tap them. Um, <clears throat> well, spiral flute, I just put the spiral flute in my, my drilling uh, hand drill, really, <laughs> and then uh, you or I uh, um, <clears throat> just uh, um, make it so that the uh, uh, tap slips in the chuck. So it doesn't turn it. Uh, break it by turning so and then because aluminium is very weak material it's very soft uh, and if the hole is clean and if you have some alcohol there I usually use ethanol it's cheap <coughs> and uh, then uh, if everything is clean you don't need to clean up the hole after tapping it will be completely clean after that one and uh, in electronics you usually don't use any grease and uh, this one is really it's a good combination and <clears throat> then uh, for harder harder materials I really hesitate to use the uh, spiral flutes uh, it's either cant up tap or uh, the uh, straight one and then you of course need to break the chip by turning uh, turning the handle backwards a little bit every now and then uh, in order to not to jam the tap in the hole okay um, hopefully uh, this uh, oh yeah one more thing about the taps uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, about their uh, yes, uh, I already talked about dura dura durability. Uh, well, the easiest way to break a tap in a hole uh, is to use a wrong type of tap. For example, a can tap in a blind hole. Then just keep on turning and doing this with uh, an adjustable wrench. So tap usually doesn't break uh, by the torque it breaks if you are twisting it uh, sideways, bending it. This will break your tap. Uh, torque, they can take uh, usually more than you could ever imagine. Uh, well, and then, <coughs> well, first of all, don't keep the dull, dull uh, taps. Uh, they they cause more trouble than you could ever imagine and then uh, well use the correct one uh, keep it straight don't bend it and there you go it's usually very easy hardest materials require a little bit different approach but aluminium and copper well um, there is an exception of this hard material thing and this is um, stainless steel or actually any material that uh, work hardens um, for this ones uh, the uh, uh, tapered tap is not very good because uh, it takes so small uh, uh, cuttings so the first cutting which is really negligible hardens the thing and after that you have hard time turning it and probably you will break it there so for uh, work hardening materials gun tap or spiral fluid uh, yeah uh, and uh, very good guidance uh, and uh, there you go oh uh, 
copper is also a work hardening material. I have um, been dealing with that thing. In electronics you need to do sometimes uh, power rails which are made of uh, aluminium or copper. And uh, the copper ones, if you thread them uh, using a taper tap, doesn't really work. Uh, in this case, I always use my um, uh, spiral flute taps. Well, that's all about uh, taps. <coughs> well, the packet I uh, received uh, last week. Well, first of all, uh, it contained uh, a lot of uh, weight. This stuff. Well, uh, it's a box, shredded box. Yep. Well, the box it itself was not, of course, shredded. Uh, uh, what it contained uh, was um, these things. I put uh, a picture down there, but uh, first of all, this is wedge uh, um, to drive out. Uh, things from uh, Morse uh, tapers. Uh, sometimes when you push them there and usually they should, uh, they stay very tight and then you need something like this to drive them off. Uh, uh, one could probably make this by himself but for the price I don't know whether it is worth that. And furthermore these are, well, they are good. And then, <coughs> of course, uh, uh, well, last week uh, I bought uh, from Flea Market a lot of uh, uh, drills uh, with most uh, two and most th three ta tapers. At the moment, uh, in Finland, I don't have a suitable SK30 ad uh, adapter for these. Well, now I have. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, well, this is the first one. Um, uh, I put a picture once more there. Uh, you can see it's an adapter. I Well, I take it out of the package here so you can see. Uh, well, they are really nicely packed. Uh, uh, and this one happens to be... Well, this is Morse 1 taper. You can see through it and uh, all the surfaces are really nice. So far, well, uh, I um, uh, ordered this from a place called uh, Gemmler. And uh, so far, they, they seem to be really good. Of course, I cannot measure them here, but... Uh, Hopefully, I'm not going to get disappointed. <clears throat> well, from all the feedback I have got, I will not get disappointed with this. And four. Uh, yes, I have more taper. One, two, and three. So now, uh, and uh, bigger drills I don't really want to put into my milling machine. Uh, this, uh, <clears throat> no. Uh, that's uh, that's too bad. Okay, and what about the drills that don't have uh, uh, this type of uh, <coughs> type of uh, uh, taper? Uh, they do drills that are straight. Hmm. Well, back home I have uh, one uh, uh, Eastern Germany made drill chuck with four jaws. Then I have one uh, which is made by Röhm, which is very famous and very durable and very good uh, German company of making these kind of things. And then I have one uh, which is, uh, well, seems to be a good quality, but uh, nobody know. Well, when I measure it, uh, then I know. But all three of these uh, use uh, the Jacobs uh, 
B16 taper. Hmm. Okay. And this is the reason for this. Uh, so, uh, this one too is a really good fact. Uh, it's wrapped in some form, kind of uh, paper, which is uh, not uh, directly oily, but it's and now you have the Jacobs uh, uh, taper here. And then this end uh, goes to the milling machine. You put your chuck here, bang it in, and uh, there you are. Yeah. And when the time comes that uh, I need to change the chuck, uh, well, it's quite easily, easily removed uh, by wedges uh, from the sides squeezing it out. So, yeah. I'm uh, probably fully covered with uh, uh, drilling activities in my uh, milling machine. Well, <coughs> this milling machine doesn't have a quill. And uh, <coughs> so, if you want to bore something, you always need uh, to do this by raising uh, the table. Or, if you want, you can, in this milling machine, you can uh, turn the head 90 degrees and drill sideways, if you want. Uh, this is probably something I, I do, because uh, uh, <coughs> this direction is uh, easier to manage. And, uh, well, if you bore from up to down, uh, uh, raising the table, uh, you need to learn the feeds and speeds of these drills with uh, the material in question. Well, maybe that's a good learning experience. Okay, that was my packet uh, last week. Uh, so far, I'm really satisfied with that one. <laughs> What did I find in the flea market? Hmm. Well, uh, in a typical German flea market, uh, you can find a mixture of uh, new and old stuff. Um, in this case, um, I was visiting uh, the flea market in Höchst. It's not the normal Frankfurt uh, flea market is a different place. Um, it's um, something like, I believe, 12 kilometers from here. Very good stri striking distance for a bicycle. Uh, the weather was wonderful. wonderful. Okay. So, uh, uh, what I got there. Okay. The first thing was this uh, hearing, a uh, uh, hearing protection, personal protection equipment. It, the brand is Vicent, and this one uh, uh, is just the plugs you put in your ears like this, and uh, then you are deaf. No. <laughs> Uh, they are designed in a way that they uh, still allow you to hear something. So, mm, yeah. And they are quite durable. The only complaint about this is uh, once you get these into your ears, you can hear the scratching of this uh, material. And uh, this is something that annoys me a little bit. But... Uh, <coughs> Uh, well, they look like uh, little nibbles. <laughs> and then it comes with uh, manual. Well, uh, this is really, really, uh, it's really... Uh, okay. Uh, this is in uh, multiple languages. Uh, there is a table about uh, how much they they uh, protect, uh, how much is the, what's the amount of, 
Ah, okay. How much do they remove from the sound? And uh, uh, as always, they uh, stayed here in the table. I put a picture there. So uh, they state uh, the frequency ranges and how much uh, do they dampen the sound. And uh, <clears throat> well, uh, this table states uh, the minimum amount of protection is given in the uh, lowest frequencies, which is good, because usually uh, when you, which really hurt your ears, are the frequencies around one kilohertz and they're a little bit up, uh, because they contain the most energy. Uh, oh yeah, this paper. Okay. Oh, I need to take a picture of this. Okay. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, is it still readable? No, yes it is, <laughs> okay, uh, uh, things happen, okay, that was the earplugs, they are completely new and uh, the brand is quite good, uh, I believe it's uh, uh, at least the, the table states uh, and yes it seems to be Chinese. <laughs> okay, well, the next uh, <coughs> item, uh, which definitely is not Chinese, is this. Well, it's a hammerhead. Um, it's a uh, stage here, 500, mm, 500 grams, mm, about correct. And there is a logo, which uh, I cannot uh, decode. Please, if you know uh, what is this logo, I try to put a picture here. Please uh, tell me what is this. Um, well, it has some wings, not too much. And <laughs> I'm totally positive this isn't a Chinese one. And... Uh, one year, so not too much. Um, then I collected uh, two wise grips. Uh, this, the other one has uh, elongated um, jaws. The other one is the normal one you you meet. You never don't. You always need. Uh, these are really small. I have huge and uh, all in between something like this you always need uh, well uh, these were new and they were, were, were mm, sold in a piece of uh, plastic like this one and it is my assumption although the company seems to be a German one I still have a doubt whether these uh, are German. I believe these are Chinese, just uh, packed this way. Okay. Well, the next item. And now we are talking. This is... Uh, I bought a few taps. Oh yeah, th the price of those were something like... Uh, well, I don't remember. Uh, those wise scripts. But now the next item uh, was taps. I bought three packages, one 12 millimeter, one 8 millimeter and one 6 millimeter. These are the most used uh, tap sizes in my shop. So, and uh, these are, hmm, now this is a quiz uh, which I answer after the uh, when I'm through with the, all this, which type of tap is this? I put a picture down there. Okay, so all three uh, sizes are the same type, and uh, these are uh, uh, high speed steel, uh, and uh, they are uh, from a very good company, Mapal which is a German company. These are definitely German-made. Uh, 
the drills, co the taps contain the air wax, which is uh, there. Sometimes in the flea market they um, fake this air wax. They take a used tap and then they dip it into some uh, uh, thing and then you have ear wax uh, and you think it's a new one. No, but these are new, I know. And for all three packages, each containing five of these, uh, I paid uh, 25 euros. And because this is a really good quality stuff, I didn't pay too much. It's uh, like... Uh, um, less than two euros a pop and this is uh, okay for me it's uh, not cheap as it is but it's uh, the Germans say price wert worth the price yeah and you never can have enough taps, especially those that you use a lot. And then my final find was uh, a set of uh, things. Well, today I found out when searching the internet that this one was uh, sold uh, by a big uh, German uh, chain called Lidl. Uh, they uh, have been selling these uh, with a very reason reasonable price. But what I found out here, this is uh, this is a complete set with uh, this uh, hmm, tapping tool, uh, which is a joke actually. And then uh, we have uh, these taps, which are. Again, another quiz. What type of tap is this? I will answer that question in, in a very, very short moment. And then, <coughs> why I bought this is the drills. Uh, because in um, metric system, uh, the drills are like for an uh, uh, M, M8, for example. You need to have a drill 6.8 millimeters. And uh, the drill set I have back home is uh, in half millimeters. So I have one that is 6 millimeters, then I have one that is uh, 6.5, and then I have one that is uh, 7 millimeters. But I'm not having the one with 6.8 millimeters. Okay, and uh, this is of course, this is from uh, M3 to M12, this set. And you have the corresponding uh, drills here. <coughs> the drills in this set are, uh, are uh, made of, uh, they are high speed steel, they are unused. I can tell, uh, totally unused. The taps, however, well, uh, the taps are an other joke in this uh, thing. They are, first of all, they are normal carbon steel. So either uh, they are too soft uh, to make any threads in steel or, uh, or so, or they break e very easily. Uh, I'm going to throw these away. Uh, I'm not going to gamble with... Uh, with this type of taps uh, and the tap wrench also goes away but the container is nice it has uh, all the uh, all the threads I usually use and uh, play, place for those and a place for the drills which are there uh, and maybe a place for a tap uh, wrench but uh, this really is a joke uh, so <clears throat> okay uh, so this was my last find in the flea market. And now, what are the, what are the types of uh, the taps uh, for today? So for the mapa, these taps are first of all, all they are plug taps. And for the, furthermore, 
they are gun taps. So plug gun tap. Uh, so these are <coughs> not very easy uh, to start training, but and uh, then they uh, throw their cuttings to the direction of your hole. So if you have a blind hole, do not use this. You you will either jam your tap there and when it's jammed you probably will uh, break it down in the hole and uh, the other type the little set uh, was um, uh, this was uh, also a tap uh, a plug tap you can count one two three four five six six uh, cutting edges it's a plug tap and then uh, it's uh, the flutes are straight well this is uh, <coughs> this doesn't uh, evacuate uh, the, tra the uh, cuttings so you need to when you do uh, threading with this you need to evacuate uh, the threads manually so you need to uh, uh, especially with the long holes you need to go in a little bit and then uh, uh, first of all uh, uh, <coughs> turn back a little bit every now and then to break the chips and then uh, if the hole is really long you need to take it completely off clean it out and then uh, do further threading with this okay um, I really hope you found uh, out this a little bit interesting, the tapping. Tapping is always uh, something that uh, really interests uh, people and uh, I believe uh, I tried to make this presentation uh, somewhat informative. Uh, hopefully, uh, well, let's see. Okay, uh, this was all about the taps. Well. This was all about this episode. Uh, next week, maybe some more programming. As promised, there will be um, some talk about uh, analog to digital conversion. Uh, till then, see you!